again. This is Jack Benny talking. <laughs> That's me, Groucho Marx. The big story. It's Jubilee! Way back home. The Armed Forces Radio Service is on the air. Yes, hour after hour, day after day, the Armed Forces Radio Service is on the air in round-the-clock operation. You will hear many familiar voices during the next half hour as we present a special broadcast dedicated to this organization which plays such an important part in the lives of American servicemen and their families stationed in every part of the globe. This is the AFRS story. To tell it, we must start at the beginning. And to start at the beginning, we must have... Silence. The mute silence of a network not yet born. No giant transmitters with their steel ribs rising into the sky. No waves of sound carrying mirth and music to the four corners of the earth. Our stars cannot talk to you. Our music, drama, news, sports events cannot reach your ears, for there are no facilities to send them hurtling through space. The year is 1942. The war is only a few months old, and it is being fought in remote, faraway places. You're a long way from home now. And into the silence come the awful sounds of battle. Then, when you have a brief moment to rest, the silence is broken again by music and a voice. This is Tokyo Rose again, fellas. Playing for me and my gal. Just for you and your gal. By the way, I bet you're lonesome, aren't you? Do you suppose she'll wait for you? It'd be a shame to lose both the war and your girl. Remember when she told you she'd be waiting for you always? But always is a long time, fellas. A very long time. Yes, during those first few months of the war, the only radio entertainment available to servicemen came through the courtesy of Radio Tokyo and Radio Berlin. Actors Sally and Tokyo Rose were getting in their little lick. It would have been understandable if such matters as radio broadcasting to the troops had been buried under large piles of more urgent matters in our nation's capital, but this was not the case. There was an ever-growing concern that factual information and news be reported regularly to the men in overseas areas. There was the obvious necessity for good entertainment through radio in the interest of morale. This was the beginning of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Its mission was clearly stated. To provide radio and sound equipment, services and personnel for the information, education, and entertainment of armed forces overseas. Very clear, concise, very simply stated. Easy enough to put on paper. But the translation of those words into facts was a tremendous job. What did it take to put it in operation? To break the silence and put AFRS on the air. Listen. Equipment for the largest radio network in the world. Everything from tubes to transmitters. Installed in 179 separate locations around the globe. The immediate cooperation of the nation's vast commercial radio industry. Establishment of operational headquarters in Hollywood, California. And gathering top-level writers, directors, performers, and executives. Facilities for transcribing and shipping some 10,000 records a week to stations in Alaska, Africa, the South Pacific, the Caribbean, the Canal Zone. In a remarkably few months, the work was done. Transmitters were constructed and manned. Mobile radio stations arrived in areas where the tide of battle was constantly moving. The talented members of the entertainment world joined forces with the technical staff that made up AFRS, and the magic of radio brought the sounds of home to men who were far from home. And here he is, Bob Hope! <laughs> Point Magoo on the coast of California. Very lucky it's still here. <laughs> oh, for the net of the Naval Missile Center. Of course, everything down here is scientific and automatic, and you can tell the Navy runs it. It's all buttons. <laughs> and everything here is so secret. In fact, before they let me do the broadcast, I had to swear no one was listening. 
be right. <laughs> Point Lagoo is like something out of a science fiction story. Last week, the CO put a notice up on the bulletin board. From now on, the moon is off limits. <laughs> Really, this place is so advanced scientifically, they refer to Buck Rogers as that nice old gentleman. <laughs> it's very hard to get into Point Magoo, but I didn't have any trouble. When I arrived, the guard at the front gate called an officer and said, Sir, we found that missile we thought we'd lost. <laughs> but they really take security seriously here at Magoo. This afternoon, I saw a dog chasing a cat, and they were both blindfolded. <laughs> And to keep things really secret, the whole place is usually covered with fog. <laughs> Here's a very lovely melody, a very lovely lyric, and a lovelier gal to sing it, Miss Betsy Duncan. I thought I heard a radio over there. Uh, where'd you guys get it? Supplies putting him out. No kidding. Sure, they got a mobile station at Anzio already, just so we wouldn't miss Bob Hope. Is he here, too? Nope, but they say he's coming over. Well, next to see him in person, it's sure good to hear an American radio program again. Hey, I, I wonder if you can get Actress Sally on that thing. Who cares? Nobody listens to her anymore. We got G.I. Jill. Yes, they had G.I. Jill and her all-time jukebox review. They had Bob Hope, Jack Benny, Fibber McGee and Molly, Edgar Bergen. They had dozens of wonderful shows that brought music, fun, and laughter. Familiar segments of home. They had their own shows to fill their own requests. Shows like Melody Roundup for Western Music, Mail Call, Jubilee, Hymns from Home. And they heard the voices of familiar stars who were appearing just for them. Hall, presenting as soloist, the well-known concert violinist, Joseph Spaghetti, and the Brazilian soprano, Beduce Isle. And here to introduce your guests is your concert hall host, Lionel Barrymore. Thank you, and welcome to Concert Hall. We reach into Europe and South America for our guest today, and present first the brilliant Hungarian violinist, Joseph Spaghetti. For those who liked their music in a lighter vein, there was the popular show called Remember. <laughs> This is Bob Young, still substituting for Fred McMurray after 246 programs of Remember. You see, it was this way. One day, Fred called and said, uh, Bob, old boy. I knew right then there was something afoot. Bob, old boy, he said, would you mind doing a couple of programs for me? I just want to go out for a cup of coffee. I said I wouldn't. He said good and then left me here at this mic. That was 40 weeks ago. I know you can grow old trying to get weighted on around here, but 40 weeks... Hey, he must have wanted and then there was the biggest show of them all. <laughs> Command performance, USA. The greatest entertainers in America as requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance. Presented this week and every week till it's over over there. Yes, Command Performance. A star-studded show that couldn't have been duplicated at any price. That was the show where servicemen asked for and got the most unusual entertainment. Along with the music, comedy, and drama, which were regular features, they heard Hedy Lamar milking a cow. <laughs> Ann Miller dancing in G.I. shoes. <laughs> and Sheridan frying their breakfast eggs. And the never-to-be-forgotten wedding of Dick Tracy and Tess Trueheart, as played by Bing Crosby and Dinah Shore. That knocking at my door Who's that singing to the door Bringing song to my boudoir It's, it's 
is I, Dick Tracy. How I love your square-cut chin. I'll come down and let you in. Hiya, Dick. Give me some skin. Thanks. You scared Tess through heart. <laughs> well, the big day, huh, Tess? We're finally going to get married. Yes, Dick, and this time you better go through with it. I've waited 13 years to get married, and you keep putting it off. Well, honey, some big crime keeps coming up, and I have to dash out and solve it. In 1941, it was 88 Keys. In 1942, it was Mrs. Mrs. Pruneface. And in 1944... Wait a minute. What happened to 1943? Very interesting year. My laundry came back. <laughs> Come, Tess, let us join the merry throng and get on with the nuptials. I will fling open the door. Oh, shut up. At last the moment has come. Test true heart, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Richard Tracy. Do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Oh, at last. I now pronounce you man and... Oh, bean juice. <laughs> Blasted interruptions. Always interruptions. I get that bank in the now. Excuse me, darling. Oh, Richard. Hello, Tracy at this end. Hello, police chief on this end. Well, that takes care of both ends. <laughs> But let one of the people who was in on all this wartime activity of AFRS tell you about it. Let's transfer our microphones to the San Fernando Valley home of the favorite singer among servicemen everywhere, Miss Dinah Shore. Thank you, and hiya, fellas. I'm enjoying listening to this program about AFRS, and it brings back a whole lot of memories to me. This microphone was anything but a stranger during those years. I saw those initials AFRS a good many times. And I knew that on the other side of the mic... There was the greatest listening audience a gal could ever ask for. It's a wonderful thing to know that a song you sing or a story you tell and, or the few words you speak during a program like this will be heard by millions of people all over the world. No matter how the numbers grew or how the lines expanded, I saw your network growing and expanding, too, through the South Pacific and into the Philippines and from Africa to the European continent. It was a real symbol of victory when there were AFRS stations in Tokyo and in Berlin. But now let's get back to your narrative and pick up the story from there. With the victorious end of the war, the need for the armed forces radio service became even greater. Born of a wartime necessity, it became indispensable in time of peace. To the men on occupation duty in foreign lands, to the men who served on ships of our Navy, to the men of our service hospitals that make up the bedside network, AFRS had a continuing mission. Our military planners were aware of this when they established the network that covered the world. Today, AFRS has two distinct jobs. First, to provide transcription programs for release overseas and in hospitals in the States. And second, to maintain a continual broadcast service through powerful shortwave transmitters. Sixty-three hours of programs are recorded each week. The military air transport service flies them around the globe. Some of these programs are written and produced by AFRS personnel. Others are taken directly from the nation's network, enabling the service audience to hear... Dragnet. The documented story of an actual crime. The Red Skelton Show. River McGee and Molly. Arthur Godfrey and his talent scouts. I... And the Whistler. The University of Chicago Roundtable. Yes, all these and many more. Music, drama, comedy, discussion programs. Name it and you'll find it in your program schedule. Of course, there's one small difference. You have no commercials. The programs are first recorded on tape and then the commercials are deleted. Leaving a smooth show with no advertising content. These shows represent millions of dollars invested in time and talent, and it is a tribute to the stars, the sponsors, the advertising agencies, and the networks that they are released overseas without one commercial plug. So in this roundup of personalities who make all this possible, let's by all means include one of their representatives. I am one of the people who pay the bills. I am a sponsor. I can't tell you my name because it's part of my product. 
And you won't hear it mentioned on this network. I'm not used to being in front of a microphone. I hire others to do that for me. But I would like to say that all the time and effort, yes, and money too, that we sponsors put into our radio program serve a higher purpose when AFRS sends our shows around the world. They bring a touch of home to our men and women in uniform. As a sponsor and as a representative in the field of commercial broadcasting, I am very proud to be a part of the AFRS family. The other general classification of programs broadcast through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service is written, produced, and recorded right here in Hollywood. These programs, too, run the gamut from drama to comedy, from five-minute fillers to 30-minute segments of music. And among the most important are the dramatic and documentary programs, which have earned AFRS the highest awards in radio. First award presented to AFRS for the Information and Education Program Series Fellowship. First award for the program series Pride of Service. First award for the program series This is Russia. First award for the program series Ambassador of Goodwill. Special citation from the National Conference of Christians and Jews. Special citation from the Freedom Foundation. Yes, and back of these awards is the diligent work of highly trained personnel who understand the problems involved in each project. A script or series of programs may start with a teletype message from Washington, D.C. to Hollywood, California. The basic idea is discussed and expanded by the commanding officer, the chief of operations, the program director. It is turned over to the writer who does the necessary research and then begins to weave facts together and to get them down on paper in the form of a dramatic script. The words mouth as the story is unfolded and the first draft is completed. The script passes through various hands for comment and revision and is finally marked approved for production. Now the director takes over and begins casting the show. The stars and the supporting players who will bring the words to life who will give warmth to the cold words of the script and reality to fictional characters. Meanwhile, the talented composers of Hollywood are at work, creating a musical score for the production, matching the words with music, underscoring the dramatic scenes, adding one more important part to the elements that make up a radio program. The sound effects men are busy, too, working out all the sound problems that are indicated in the script. Effects which will lend realism to the finished product. Rehearsals begin. The director brings all the elements together. Stars and supporting players become letter perfect in their parts. The orchestra carefully rehearses under the watchful eye of the conductor. The dress rehearsal comes off without a hitch. And then, they're ready for the final take. The sign over the control booth says, Stand by. The actors assemble at the microphone. The conductor raises his baton. The director gives a cue... And the program goes on the air. Thus have come into being the information and education shows. Planned, written, and produced by AFRS with one audience in mind. The Armed Forces of the United States. Aside from the dramatic shows that we've already mentioned, they include such musical programs as this. Well, hi there, fellas and gals. This is Carolina Cotton. With 15 minutes, we've roped and tied. We'll let Corral Gate open wide while we brand a few musical mavericks for you. And if the musical tastes of the servicemen are better served in another fashion, there's personal albums. Monica Lewis time. And here comes Monica with personal album, packed full of your very own musical favorites. Monica takes a quarter hour off from her duties at the film studios to sing your songs and to visit with you. So let's roll out the welcome mat for the gal with the beautiful blonde hair and those big brown eyes. Monica Lewis. Thank you, Del, and hi, everybody. Well, here we go again with more mail and more songs to sing. Once again, answering the requests of men stationed overseas who send thousands of letters pouring into AFRS headquarters every week. There is the Lena Romay Show. Luna 
que se quiebra bajo las tinieblas de mi soledad. ¿A dónde vas? Dime si esta noche tú te vas de ronda como ella se fue. ¿Con quién estás? Or perhaps the men hear their requests answered on other programs, such as Jubilee or Hot Off the Record Press. And for the actual voices of families and friends, they need only tune into the popular Way Back Home program, where they hear the bell in the steeple of the local church on a Sunday morning calling the worshippers to service. The traffic noises on the main street of their own hometown. Oh, well, hello, Jean. We're just doing fine. It's still dry and hot here. But we're expecting you home in October, and we can hardly wait for the time for you to come. The personal message from a loved one that is recorded and sent around the earth. Each day brings a new assignment. Each week calls for a new production schedule to fill the many hours of programming. To complete the picture of this portion of AFRS activities, let's switch once again to another studio across town. And hear from one of Hollywood's finest dramatic actresses, Miss Claire Trevor. Thank you. And hello, everybody. It's nice for me to be able to talk to you as myself now, instead of as an actress. I've just finished reading a script that I'll soon be doing for the Armed Forces Radio Service. I hope you enjoy the program when you hear it. I do want to tell you how much all of us in Hollywood realize your need for entertainment and for factual information. After all, that's our business. Creating characters on the radio, in motion pictures, on the stage. Characters that you will remember. From the bit player to the star. From the sound effects man to the recording engineer. We're all in this with but one purpose in mind. To provide you with the best of whatever talent we may have. As Dinah Shaw said earlier, you're a great audience. There is one other very important part to the AFRS story, the shortwave operations with broadcasts beamed to virtually all points on the surface of the Earth. Twelve powerful transmitters located on both coasts of the continental United States send out nightly shortwave broadcasts all night long, every night. In addition to our servicemen and women, these programs are heard by an estimated 90 million persons of all nationalities who recognize our voice as the voice of truth. About 45% of this broadcast time is devoted to straight news. No commentary, no editorializing, just the accurate, undistorted news. Into the short wave room of AFRS come the reports from all over the world by direct wire from the major news services. Here they are edited and prepared for broadcast, and the actual broadcasting is done by enlisted men of the Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marine. From AFRTS Los Angeles, here is a summary of the latest world news. Airman First Class, Les Osborne reporting. First, here are the highlights. And among the fraternity of newsmen, as in the entertainment world, there is great respect for the other man's ability. Let one of them tell you what he thinks of the coverage that AFRS gives to the news. Here is Mr. Knox Manning. I'm standing now in the shortwave room where a battery of teletype machines is pouring out the news on long yellow sheets of paper. It's a theme with which I'm quite familiar, having reported the news myself for something over 20 years. But nowhere here will you see anything that looks like the traditional newsroom. No reporters dashing in with a scoop. No society editor looking for a flowery phrase. It's all business here, and the business is new. The staff, partly military, partly civilian, is conscious of its responsibility to carry the straight news, factual and uncensored. Even during the recent presidential election, AFRS carefully took the middle course, reporting the campaign without bias or prejudice or attempt to influence. In my time as a newsman, I've covered everything from social events to crime waves, from battles in the divorce courts to battles between nations. But let me just say this. The shortwave broadcast of AFRS come the closest to real news reporting that we have today. There's no slanting, no opinions, no editorials, just news. Probably no other single type of program is more popular than the sports broadcast. Once again, AFRS stands at the top of its field. For this is the largest sports network in the world. All year long, play-by-play broadcasts of all types of sports events are shortwave overseas. The World Series, the Tennis Championships, the Olympic Games, the top professional and collegiate football matches. All the major sports events reach our servicemen wherever they are stationed. 
Yes, all these many things we have talked about make up the Armed Forces Radio Service. It's a big operation involving many people, technicians, writers, performers, directors, executives, military personnel, and civilians. And back of it all is the American public. A public, incidentally, that never gets to hear the broadcasts of this network. For a word about them, we switch you once again to another studio in Hollywood. It may be just a bit noisy because there's a rehearsal in progress there now. Starring a man who's landed on more beaches in the movies than most of us have in actual war. And who is also a veteran of six years' service in the Army, Mr. Forrest Tucker. This is Forrest Tucker speaking to you from the rehearsal studio in Hollywood. We're about to record a dramatic show for broadcast to our armed forces overseas. When you talk about the public, the great American public, I'm right into the conversation. During the past year, I've had a chance to meet the public in person. You've probably heard about our project called Movie Time USA. I've traveled more than 30,000 miles around the country, big cities and small towns. I've seen the people who go to movies and listen to the radio and watch television. I know what a tremendous thing entertainment is, what a big part it plays in our lives. Those people are the ones who are paying the bills. They're the taxpayers. Our men and women in uniform are getting entertainment wherever they may be stationed around the world. When you get right down to it, it's the people of America who are making it possible. This is a big story that we have covered in a half hour. A story that includes many elements. It's a little 50-watt station on a tiny island in the mid-Pacific. It's a giant 100,000-watt transmitter in Germany. It's a documentary program that reveals the insidious aims of communism to an eavesdropping audience of many nationalities. It's a comedy program that brings a moment of laughter and cheer to a serviceman far from home. It's tubes and wires, turntables, dials, cables, and transmitters. It's the guilds and crafts and unions that cooperate with us. The actors, singers, musicians who perform for us. And above all, it's you, the audience. The sailor at sea, the wounded marine in a hospital. The listener to one of the 67 AFRS stations around the world. This voice of ours is strong. The signal is loud and clear. Through it, we will continue to promote the highest standards of American democracy within our armed forces. There is no end to the AFRF story. You have been listening to the AFRF story with Bill Woodson as narrator and featuring Dinah Shore, Claire Trevor, Knox Manning, and Forrest Tucker. Others in the cast were Julie Bennett, Herb Ellis, Bill Foreman, Leo Cleary, Art Ballinger, Clayton Post, and Jack Lloyd. Music was composed by John Hicks with musical direction by Michelle Perrier. The AFRS story was written by Robert C. Vinson, produced and directed by Will Scott. Al Goodwin speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.